to another Android Office Hours from the uh, somewhat snowy London. Um, uh, my name is Matt Gorn. I'm joined with Chris Staines. Yep, and we're going to be discussing all things Android. Um, usual disclaimer, we don't talk about future releases or future announcements or anything that we might be doing. Um, we're literally here to talk about the APIs that we've got and to try and help you guys out. So, yeah, sorry we're a bit late today. We're a bit of a couple of def technical <laughs> difficulties. One after the other. Yeah. But we're, we're here. It's all good. Um, we've got Rich and Giuseppe as well in the Hangout. Hey, Giuseppe, how are you doing? I'm Viva. Hello, Matt. Thank you. Hi, guys. Hey. Uh, I just joined in case I could help with the technical difficulties, but I'm actually in a Mountain View at the moment, so it's kind of 6 o'clock in the morning. So I'm going to drop out and leave these guys to it. <laughs> I was useless anyway. I'll catch you guys later. Cheers, everyone. Yeah. Beware of a jet lag. <laughs> How's things are you? Viva. With me? Yeah, Viva. Uh, great. A little bit tired, but it's the flu season, so everybody's a little bit sick. Yeah. Not good. Yeah, I just about managed to stay away from that from CES. Um, right. Anything interesting from CES then, when you went? Yes. Lots of new Google TV devices. <laughs> I'm sure people was keen to see. <laughs> so yeah, we announced partnerships with Asus, Netgear, TCL. Um, LG announced a new set of TVs, um, as did Hisense. So yeah, it was amazing. Um, yeah, Johan involved. Hisense had massive billboards in his Snap Films app um, everywhere. But yeah, no, it was a really, really good event, really, really fun. Loads of stuff, lots of Miracast devices as well. Definitely way out of the woodwork, so... Yeah, that's good. Sounds good. Cool. So, any questions in the room? Sergio, what's the deal? Copy you, you film me. Oh, no. Yeah, turn everything down. Yeah. Say that again, Giuseppe. He muted himself. <laughs> Everyone's right. having technical issues as well. Well, Viva, I know you have a question because it was in the moderator. So, do you want to ask it live? Uh, yeah. Um, now, uh, uh, what we see, we see more televisions. We see Android uh, smart watches. We see Google Glasses. So, I was wondering if there's a good technique to do pair to pair with the different devices. Um, I mean. The Wi-Fi Direct is the way we we like this sort of prescribed way of doing it from now on, really. Um, so network discovery, I can't remember what the acronym is. NDS, wasn't it? Yeah, NDS. Um, so that's sort of there's a big training sample on uh, developers.android.com, which is actually really good. Um, so yeah, I mean that, that's the way I'd sort of point you to, mainly because it's going to be bundled through Android from now on, um, and it's you have quicker sort of P2P access than sort of Bluetooth. Um, so that's the way I'd say. Um, so, yeah. yeah, I think for me, it, I don't think we've got to this point where we've got like a unified API, one one size fits all. I think like obviously Google TV, we have any mode, but that's very much a case if you fling stuff to the TV, you can discover it, but you can't then start going backwards. Um, then when you start talking about smartwatches, obviously all of them are using Bluetooth as their way of communication. You mm -hmm. don't then have Wi-Fi, so I don't think there is just a one solution fix all. Obviously, if there's um, a service that you can use that does all of this for you, then um, look into it. But obviously, you start buying into something that if they suddenly decide to stop supporting it, or they change it, or suddenly there's a new device they don't want to support, you, you're kind of tied into that point. So yeah, I think the NDS stuff is probably quite a safe way to go. Um, but yeah, just try and do whatever you think is best and fits in right with your solution. And don't just try and bear in mind future down the line that you may need to swap it out. No, okay, uh, I will follow the tutorial online then. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a nice tutorial, it's a nice code there, so it's definitely worth a look. Cool, thank you. Cheers, Viva. Hey, it looks like we've got more guys. We've got Yossi. Hi, guys. Hey, how are you doing? I'm yeah, fine. Uh, I have a little question. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if I can ask, or is this some, uh, someone else on the line? Um, there is, but go for it and ask a question. Okay, I'm trying to see to do some uh, POC about video view, and what I'm trying to do is uh, 
basically have a, a full screen video view uh, inside a view pager and on the video view I'll, I want to show some uh, custom buttons but uh, every time I'll tr I try to um, to load the, uh, the video to the video view I get uh, an error uh, sh that the video view cannot uh, play the file even though um, when commenting all the buttons or all the uh, drawables on top of the video view the file plays correctly any known issue about this or something like that that's very weird. You, you're definitely just using a plain old video view. You're not using like the YouTube Player API. Or no, 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 no. A uh, video view from the Android. Uh, oh, one. That yeah. should cause an issue. Have you tried with, with the buttons, but not in a view pager? Yeah. Also, the same uh, result. Um, it works. Uh, doesn't. No, it does. It doesn't work. Where is your video source coming from? Uh, from the SD card, I have it on uh, an SD card. Also, try to, to do it on the raw uh, data files. And the permissions is set correctly. Sorry, didn't hear you. The permission is set correctly. Yes, yes, of course. I can. Uh, if I just uh, do a, a simple view with the video view on it, and attach the media file, and uh, I just uh, click on it, and it plays correctly. Uh, the only problem is when I'm starting to add uh, uh, image buttons or any other uh, uh, text views or overlays on it uh, inside the relative layout or linear layout, whatever you want, and uh, the view doesn't uh, doesn't uh, play the video. Um, video view is basically a glorified surface view with like integrated media player functionality. Um, and Surface View draws differently to other views. It sort of punches right for the window. So Android does some sort of optimization and stuff to get it to get it to work. Um, so I'll have a look at the Surface View documentation because I remember there being a flag on there where you can sort of set a compatibility mode to make it sort of draw things on top. But I can't remember off the top of my head. It's been a while since I've used it. Um, but have a look at Surface View and that that sort of that class's documentation because I'm pretty sure there's a flag on there. Okay, I'll try to see it. And another question, um, uh, I didn't encounter it, but uh, we have a view pager with a surface view on it. And basically, when you do the scrolling, the, the scroll from side to side, um, you see a black surface. Uh, the, the view doesn't render from one view page uh, switch to another. You know, like on the camera, and uh, when you switch uh, from live video to the gallery, you see the gallery is uh, um, is <coughs> sorry has a black uh, um, overlay. Uh, uh, the reason for that is because the way Surface View works, in that it punches through all the windows. So imagine your Surface View is right at the back of your views, and it sort of punches through. Um, so what you're actually seeing is the very back window, the black. That's what the black is. Um, it's just because the way it draws is different to other views. Um, there's no w real way around it, unfortunately, oh. um, other than not using the Surface View. But obviously, if you're using the video, you have to. Yeah, I didn't see it until uh, now. We, we tried to do something with the camera preview and just do a view pager scrolling uh, left to, to right. And we saw that the, basically the view doesn't completely render. Because on the Nexus, uh, Galaxy Nexus, with the Jelly Bean, it works flawlessly you don't see the black uh, rendering and on, on different devices like on the Samsung S2 or S3 you see the black uh, window stays until the full uh, window is been uh, switched in. Yeah, that, that's, it, it, it's probably fixed in Jelly Bean then um, but I, I, it's just the way Surface you works from what I know. Okay. Thanks guys, I'll try it. Hi. Can I ask a question? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Uh, so I have uh, two questions, please. Uh, the first one is how to change the Stack Overflow icon programmatically, like when switching when I have. To 
Action bar overflow. Action bar overflow. Switches programmatically. Any idea? You want to switch the icon? The icon, yeah. Well, the scenario is that I have several. Well, I have a split action bar, the action bar, and then the action mode as well, which is the contextual action bar, another term for it. And I have two different backgrounds for the for the action bar, for the action bar and the split action bar. But and they are both the uh, contrast to one another, so so the overflow looks hidden in one on, on the dark if it's uh, light and light and it looks hidden on the and vice versa. Um, there, really. Um, yeah, anything you can say is to use and not use. Or implementation of action bar, just use action bar. We access without we do it in clear bolt. There's no way. Wow. Yeah, I think you get access to the source, not the drawables, so you can change it. Okay, okay, thank you. And uh, my second question is I tried, I, I want to play. Um, I think Alessandro, hi. <laughs> Can you please turn off the microphone? I think you we have background noises. The microphone, not the earphones. It's alright. We just muted it. Don't it. Don't worry. Okay. Thanks. So, uh, my second question regarding uh, HLS MIME type. I want to. I, I understand that Android. As of 3.0 supports HLS playing, and well, it's it kind of. I had problems with it, but on 4 it, uh, they got fixed. But there isn't any MIME type, uh, th there isn't any HLS MIME type that uh, triggers the activity of, uh, of the player. I just, I, I wrote, I gave, I gave the wrong MIME type to, to play the HLS just for the default player to, to pop, to the default uh, uh, player activity to pop up. But, um, What's the MIME type? What's what's the formal MIME type that the default player supports for HLS? I think HLS you you want to package it up as um, MP4, I think, and then there is something in that file which will then. Where's that right now? Yeah, so that's what I did. I, I ran. I, I gave the MP, MP4 uh, MIME type, and it runs, but. There, there, there may be players that support MP, MP4, but not HLS. So, well, it'll be the Android platform that will be supporting HLS. I mean, the way you'd want to do it, if you wanted to ensure that players that didn't support HLS weren't getting played in that way using that file, then you'd want to be basically looking at the Android. What? What? Sorry, I didn't get it. So, if you want to be using the Android version code if you only wanted to play the HLS stream on of Android and above. So, how do I run only the, the activity of. I, I need to run specifically the built in uh, player's activity, right? I, 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 I invoke intent to run the activity. I'm not using a, a, the, the player as part of, of the app. Yeah, mm -hmm. so all you want to do is invoke that activity. You want to invoke that activity depending on which version of Android you're running. Is that right? But or HLS. Yeah, but for example, Samsung is perhaps Samsung implemented their own activity and it's a different package name or something. Um, so what you want to be doing is make sure you're using the action underscore view style intent. So then that way, here's an MP4 file. Please do the application that is capable of playing it, or then be given the chance to basically compose that. Um, okay, so there's a delay here. Sorry, <laughs> I, I'm listening. Um, so the only last thing I was going to say is, um, since all versions of Android um, play your HLS stream correctly, you basically just want to make sure that you only launch that intent on those versions of Android and above. Okay, but the problem is that if I run the intent with my type, 
with the MP, MP, with MP4 MIME type, uh, what will happen is that players that support MP4 will catch this, but the, I saw some players that support MP4 but do not support HLS, which is kind of a wrapper around MP4, that's right, but, or MP4, um, but they still don't support it. Could you post in the chat, like, which devices you're referring to, and maybe we can have a little dig around? No, it's more like what players are supported because if 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 if, if a person support um, in, if a user s s installs two players that support MP4, but from the from the Play Store they, they install two players that support MP4 but not HLS, they won't play my uh, my video. Yeah, but I guess it depends because if they're using a player which is implementing their own um, media codecs and their own sort of encoding decoding, then they're not going to be relying on the Android system. So at which point, yeah, it's I guess the difficult way would be trying to get that across to a user. I mean, the obvious choice is to, since you know you're going to be able to run it on certain devices of Android, run it in a video view, and then that way you kind of get control of it. Um, there's the media controllers, so you don't have to do any controls or handling, fast forward, rewinding, etc. Um, so it should be relatively trivial just to add in your own video view, um, which might be a good way just to get around this. Yeah, so, so how, how do I skip around uh, implementing all the, the controllers, the, 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 net, the fast forward, the, 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 the seek to bar and stuff like that. So when you create a video view, you can just also um, set a media controller and then providing you set that media controller, which again is just a class that is just handed to you, it'll just do the video view for you. Okay. 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 So and and can we can can I request to add the um, the the HLS MIME type in future releases? That goes on to a much larger issue of the way HLS kind of handles itself. So it's not necessarily a mind type. I think that would be more to do with a standard issue rather than Android just sitting there saying, here's a mind type, use it for Android only. I think it would need to be a slightly bigger discussion. Um, so, yeah, I think but, yeah, I don't think that's something we could necessarily do because, like I say, I think it's one of those things that Apple's obviously created the standard, made it so that MP4 is the way of dealing with it. Um, that's kind of the standard. Um, so yeah. yeah, maybe it'll change. Definitely. Okay, so it's it's kind of more of the of the just the activity of the media player. It's just the activity, the 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 intents that the activity of the media player can handle. That's it, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thanks. Cool. Anyone else have a question? Can I have a question, guys? Go yeah, sure. Alessandro. Thank you. So uh, I developed uh, an app that's uh, Music Read that relies on uh, iTunes a API. Okay. And uh, I choose a random song uh, selected by genre, and then I play, and the user must guess the name and the artist. But uh, I um, provide a registration for this to have the rankings and so on. But uh, do I have to provide a privacy policy inside the app on or on the Google Play Store uh, where the appropriate section? So I think the Play Store changed its regulations regarding the privacy policy. Is it you have to have one now? Or you either have to have one or you explicitly say you're not going to provide one. Okay. Um, my recommendation would be definitely to have one on the Play Store. And then if you've got a convenient place where you can have it in the app and it makes sense for you to have it in the app, like in terms of you've got a settings page, you can just put it at the end of there and you've got a nice easy way of keeping the two in sync. Um, I'd, I'd go with that. I don't see any reason if you've already gone to the time to prepare it um, and you've got a spot where it can live in the app without being in the way, then I'd say just include it. But I don't think it's required. Okay, but it's not a legal problem if uh, I don't put it in the app, inside the app? It's not a legal problem in terms of us. It's more of a legal problem, I guess, between you and the user. Um, I can't really comment because I don't know that much about it because yeah. I'm not illegal. Um, no, uh, it's because uh, I don't know if uh, 
um, I must provide a privacy policy because the user tell me his data, okay? And so I, I must protect this data and I have to say, okay, uh, these data are stored, uh, protected, okay, and uh, you're right, okay. I would always bundle the privacy policy with the app, just in case your app isn't, isn't distributed with Play Store. So if it goes into Amazon App Store or any other sort of distribution channel, and they don't allow you to show a privacy policy, it's always going to be with your app. Okay. Um, so it's a fail safe. So I, I, would, I would always do it. If you've, made the, if you've done the, made, sort of took the time to create one, um, shoving it in your assets folder and then creating a web view, it's, it's not much work. OK. Perfect. Thank you. I guess it kind of leads on to the slightly wider picture of using that in your app. Then it kind of, if a user goes to the time to actually hunt that out, then it probably means they're slightly concerned about your app, and it's probably a good way of just kind of putting their mind at ease. Yeah, another way of looking at it as well. Okay, thank you. So, we've got any more questions in the mod? Um, not moderator. Yes, <laughs> Ryan. Go on, Giuseppe. I knew you'd have one. Hi. I have a, a question about uh, the Google Drive, uh, the Google Drive SDK. Do you okay. think that this is the right place to ask for this question? We can try and answer. We don't know. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. It's one where you need Rich and Nick here. They can go around doing uh, developer days on this. So, but yeah, go for it. Okay, let's go. Uh, well, I'm trying to get uh, the um, token authorization using the new Google Play services, and I combine this uh, with the Google Drive SDK. Um, Sometime the Google the Google Drive SDK returned to me a uh, null object, null error, uh, null exception on um, on the upload of the file. But this happened very very uh, randomly, so this is not uh, a bug, but it's does something concerning the web server or I don't know the services from driver. Anyone got some experience about that? Um, I'd probably I'd probably guess that it's the connection issue. Maybe maybe the connection dropped out for a millisecond while it was uploading, um, and it doesn't do any retrying. So you might need to do implement that yourself. No no no. <laughs> I already tried to clean the cache and everything. Uh, I also found on Stack Overflow a question like this without any answers. If you want, I can share the question. Because uh, I believe that there is uh, some uh, some problem with the services. Um, yeah, share the question um, or the Stack Overflow link, and we'll try and give it to Rich and Nick because they've got far more experience with the Drive SDK than we have. Um, okay, okay. I will I will find right now, and I will put in the chat. So you can go right. to another question with someone else. Cheers, Zephy. Um, are there any other questions in the in the uh, chat? Oh, we're going to get some moderator. It's going yeah, to let's get some moderator questions on the go. Right. So there is a question from Jay Dixon, who asked, "Is there any as there's a cast management in the Google Play in-app purchase sort of flow in version three?" It um, was asking, "How do you actually clear the cache when you're actually making changes, sort of to prices, to items, to whatever you need to?" Um, Jay, do you want to answer? No, no, you go for it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, from what I gather, when you make any changes to your sort of in-app purchases, in-app purchases, um, the Google Play client will actually be notified, and it will inval inv invalidate its cache. And so, I'm pretty sure you can just assume that any call that you make, the cache is valid. I think that's a pretty safe assumption. I guess the only time you might see issues is it does take a little while for updates in the Play Store when it comes to billing to actually filter through to the app. So you might have to wait a little while for that to go through. But yeah, yeah. Uh, if you've got a more solid example, that drop us another question. But yeah, I think like you say, Google Play will sort it out. <laughs> uh, Andrew Kelly has asked, can you please confirm the current refund period on the Google Play Store? Um, is there any way to query what time it is? I liked your answer to this. Um, no, you cannot do it. 
And the main reason I kind of like that is just the simple fact that if you're trying to find that out, I question what you're trying to do with it. I like the idea, well, I don't like the idea, but I just can easily see how people would uh, take advantage of that. Um, but I mean, it's only changed once, so I, and I can't gather it's not going to change for a while, so but if it does. Um, well, we don't know. Yeah, that's for us. We don't yeah. know if it's going to change. If, if the Google Play team decide they want to change it, then it is probably due to customer demand and they've obviously got a good reason for doing it. Um, and obviously that's when we'll make a public statement, etc. Yeah. Um, but it's not going to be a regular occurrence. It's not going to be something that happens dynamically. It's, uh, yeah, I think if we got to the point where we're changing it regularly, it would confuse developers as well as consumers, which we don't want to do. Uh, oh, got some more questions than moderator, actually. Yeah. Um, how difficult is it to enable printing from within Android? How different are the APIs for version 2 and version 4? Kevin? I have no experience of the Google Print um, API, so I couldn't comment. Have you played with it? I haven't played with it. I don't know, <clears throat> um, to be brutally honest. That might be a question to try again next week. We can probably copy it over from the moderator. Perhaps Rich or Nick will have a better idea. If not, we'll go away and look at it and come back with an answer there. Yeah, I'll have a look after this, because these have come in recently, so I might chance to look at them. Um, you got any more questions? So there's a question, can anyone tell me how to override slash hide outgoing calling screen in Android? Um, Nijandra, I think. I could have just destroyed that name. Sorry if I have. Um, so yeah, Chris has kind of pointed out there's the action new outgoing call broadcast, which you can essentially register to be overridden. Um, I also recommend looking at SIPDroid. It's an open source um, voice over IP app. Um, but generally, I'd say look at the documentation. It'll give you a good idea of what's going on. And then if you want to look at any examples, then SIPDroid is quite a nice way of then going and digging around. Um, yeah, I'd worry about why you're trying to do this. If you're trying to implement calling yourself, like if you're trying to create a VoIP client or something, um, then yeah, it's a valid use case. But if you're trying to sort of hide someone's trying to call via GSM or whatever, I'd, I'd worry about that because I'm not sure why you need to do that. Yeah, I think it's just a bit of a niche use case. I think the time I had to look at it was um, a company that wanted to tell whether you were making um, an international call or not. Um, but yeah, I'd say be very careful because, like you say, you're kind of dis just kind of integrating really heavily with the core purpose of someone's phone. Um, Especially as people know what the layout is, how to sort of turn the speaker on and off, mute, all that kind of stuff. I think it's a prime candidate for just giving a tutorial of like what's going to happen when they've installed your app and enabled certain things. Agreed. Um, so, do you want to go to the next one? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, if anyone has a question live, feel free to yeah, just jump, jump in. in. So, Andrew Kelly, another question of Andy. Um, with the drawable no DPI bucket, could you give an explanation of why you want to use this? And how would the image look on an XHDPI device compared to an NDPI device? Why would I want this to happen? We, we just had a brief discussion about this before we came online. So, um, yeah, so basically, if you think of NDPI, LTPI, et cetera, as being a bucket, it's a range of um, uh, pixel density displays. Um, and it kind of simplifies the way that developers can think about the UI in terms of just roughly, if it's MDPI, then it will use this asset, and that's what I have to worry about as opposed to each individual one. Um, but it will still get some level of scaling. Now, I'd say you probably don't have that much of a use case for wanting to use no DPI. Um, Chris gave the example of where you wanted to handle the scaling yourself, which is valid. I've used it in the past where I've wanted to literally just have a pixel perfect image for one single device that was not going to be distributed anywhere. Um, I'd argue if you were using it, then you're probably using it in such a niche use case that you're completely aware that, of what the limitations are going to be. Um, but yeah, generally I'd say most people wouldn't need to. It's only if you need to get it out unscaled, untouched, pixel for pixel, um, exactly the same. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I have a long answer to that one. 
a primary um, sort of example of how, when to use it is um, in documentation to for widget previews uh, from version three onwards. You got it's sort of the um, rich no, widgets, so list view, grid view, all that kind of stuff. Um, and the documentation says to put your widget preview in the DPI, just because the, the launcher does all the scanning for you. Um, so that's an example. It's it's just it, the only reason we'd ever use it is if you want to do scan yourself. Um, yeah. Um, right. Hidden gems of the Android docs. Yeah. P. Brooks has asked, are there any suggestions for responding to other apps affecting your app by not free not audio channels, given the 32 max audio limit, Android limit? Um, not really. Um, there's no way you can really control what audio manager, um, how that sort of distributes its channels, so there is no way really. Um, yeah, I think generally it's a case of kind of the honor system. If you're playing around with that kind of stuff, honor when you're told to kind of shut yourself off, do it. Um, yeah, I can't think of any situations how you could overcome that beyond kind of informing the user about what's going on and kind of telling them we're trying to do this but we can't because of other applications perhaps consider closing them. I'd be interested in what scenarios you've got for this or what apps are using so many channels. Um, it's got to be interesting of how they're trying to use so many channels to sort of use up the elements. Yeah. So if you can give that in the, uh, put that in the response, I'll have a look. Um, literally just burn through all of them. I think so. There'll, there might be another page. Um, I'm having a persistent but sporadic problem with my web view. Um, it's consistent across different handsets, and I have no clue on what to do. Stack Overflow from Mini Bill. I like the name. Um, okay, so on 4.0.1, the web view shows a blank page, apparently. Okay. I'm using... So it looks like they're just trying to display some data just as a string, rather than loading from a web service. Um, doing a set of encoding. Can't say I can give you an answer to that one. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, do, th we'll do that one offline. Yeah, <laughs> sounds like an option. offline candidate. So, does anyone else have any questions in the Hangout? Come on, someone must have one. Oh yeah, we haven't looked at Hangout. Yeah, we haven't looked at Google Plus. There's not much questions either there. No. No. Okay. I'm not very popular today. Oh, back to my question uh, about the video view again. Is that Yossi? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear now. Okay, sorry. Uh, about the video view again. Yeah. Um, basically, what I did again, I just stripped all the um, but image, bu image buttons and uh, drawables and stuff from the video view and put it on the view, f uh, view pager, and it's working. On the view pager. So, no sorry. No, no buttons and it's working. No, no buttons and it's working. It's loading the the video. I can click on it and play. Click again and it, it pauses and resume and so on. Um, so, um, any suggestions where to dig up or to see why uh, when I'm adding a, an image overlay or something on on top of it, the video is. Uh. Um, th there's a flag on Surface View, from what I remember. I'll have a quick dig now, um, see if I can I, find it. You can. It might be useful to notice. I've seen people overlay their own buttons on video. Yeah, I, I just posted on the chat uh, simp a simple app I just uh, stumbled upon. It's called um, Video Super Pop Up or something like that. I don't. I'm not sure. And basically, what it does, it has uh, some Nice uh, neat UI hacking uh, to to enable a pop up of all the video you you playing, basically um, as a drag window uh, all over your uh, yeah. home screen as a widget resizable uh, inside other applications. 
and basically you have a window with the video playing and you can interact with the entire uh, screen with different activities. Um, I think it, it's using something that it shouldn't use but I'm not sure so... <laughs> Um, I, I've seen examples of it done on very simplistic apps. I think uh, my biggest concern is the fact that because it's in a view pager as well, whether we're getting to a point where something's just not quite sitting. Well, Yossi, did you say it's not working? Well, it's not working in out of a view pager. So if you don't use a view pager, it doesn't work either. Got the same problem. You're right. Um, uh, no, the same the same problem. Uh, I can get the I can play a video file. Basically, when I have the video view inside the view pager, it works. Outside the view pager, it works. If I add buttons on top of it, it doesn't work. But this, did you say it's not happening across? Is it happening across all versions of Android? Um, no, I'm just testing on my Nexus 7 and my Galaxy Nexus. I didn't test on uh, Android. Uh, 2.3 or a gingerbread or so. Uh, There's a method on Surface View called set Z order on top, which will make your Surface View act like a well, try and draw like a normal view. Um, so if you can try and get access to the Surface View from Video View, um, and then call that method, send it to true, um, it might work. That, okay, that's, well, also that's see Peter Brooks posted on the chat. We overlay buttons on video a lot on our app. Yeah. Uh, which app? Any code sample? Because Surface View sets the order on top. Oh, it's a game, Broken Sword. Uh, Okay, so it's the order on top. Yeah, I can't remember if we can get the surface view from video view. I think no, video I, no, I think I need to override video view or extend over, uh, video view and then uh, try and get some... I oh, extend surface view. So yeah, you, you can just call set Z order on top from on the video view. It should work. But it will call. I don't know if it will work. <laughs> 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 but basically, the set Z order is just to change the stacking of the elements on the layers. Um, yeah, it, it, I can't remember the exact way Surface View works, but with, without it, it sort of punches you from the back of your window. Um, whereas if you call true on set Z order on top, it does some special stuff where it kind of proxies the view, so it sort of, it looks like it's a normal view. Um, but I, I can't remember the exact details. I, I, I've done this kind of thing before, and doing that worked. So, but I don't know about your scenario. Okay. It's it quite interesting if you can like code up a, a small sample that's doing exactly the same thing. Um, it'd be interesting to see. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll try to uh, um, dig out only the specific sample for the view pager and stuff. Have a good. And maybe. Do some uh, uh, GitHub or something. Yeah, but, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure it will work because basically I've tried to do it in, in the last couple of hours, and that's the first time I saw something like that. Because uh, I did video views before and never had the problem of doing an image overlay on top of it or. Yeah. Yeah. Can't say I'm familiar with it. We've been joined by someone else. Uh, no, no, that's Alec from earlier. Uh, any other questions? Maybe Peter. We answered one of Peter's. Didn't we? Yeah, we asked one of Pete Brooks. Uh, if not, can you find Google Plus? Are we uh, on that think there? Google Plus was empty. I think we've gone through. Yep. I. I can. Uh, I'd like to ask another question if. Yeah, go for it. If there's time. Yeah. Um, so can I? How do I know if uh, an action is found on the split action bar instead of the original action bar? You don't. 
<laughs> so, with Action by Sherlock, perhaps? Like you said. Um, I, I don't know. I'm sure you could somehow. Um, I mean, it's supposed to be transparent, so you're not supposed to know. You're supposed to set up the app, and then the, app, the split action bar will be shown on certain devices, um, mainly sort of phones or sort of small devices. Yeah, but uh, what if I use different backgrounds for, like, one light and the other one dark? Um, so, so what was that? So you should, you're going to use a light background on the split? Yeah, and dark and dark uh, background on the original, and then I need to switch icons to to show the contrast. Oh, uh, I understand now. Um, don't think you're going to be able to. No, I think you just want to give them different IDs. And IDs for. I. No, I don't think I control the IDs. I don't know what the IDs are. Yeah, I don't think there's any way you can do it. Okay. You, 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 there's no way to find out whether you're going to be on a better or a normal app. Uh, or you are. Um, I didn't hear that, but I'll try the, the recording. Thank you. I don't know. I don't know enough about that. I'll ask you afterwards. Crazy ideas. Probably not realistic. Cool. Well, I guess we don't have any other questions. Yeah, looks like we're done. Anyone else? Last chance? Going once? Going twice. Sold to the guy in the yellow shirt. <laughs> okay, guys. Thank you very much. Thank um, you, guys. Thanks. Hopefully, see you all next week. Yeah. yeah. Bye. 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 Cheers, guys.